Hello boys and girls, lads and lasses and welcome to Wednesday night's TV and movie and tonight we are talking space above and beyond. So we've all watched the first episode. There is, what, 27 episodes all in all? 29? All in all. And it is a good series and it got cancelled too early, so it did. In my mind, it got cancelled too early. There was 23 episodes. 23 mm -hmm. episodes, yeah. But I think it got cancelled too early. It oh, was God. one of those series that was just... I think it was up against too many other things. Mm. That it wasn't seen as viable because it wasn't too science fiction. They brought the science fiction aspects into and mixed it with uh, how how it should be, as in the Marines and the, the Hammerheads, the, the fighter craft and space and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. They tried it almost realistic how they think things would be, but they brought the sci-fi into it, it was, as well. It, and I think it, people just didn't jail quite well. It was before it's, it came out, just before... Um, a little bit before the surge of military sci-fi came out because there's yeah. a lot of military sci-fi out there now. A lot of it written by authors who did surf. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, David Drake was around even even in the 90s. David Drake got in the 70s to the 80s because he was yeah. in that. But, um, but there was a suddenly massive surge of military sci-fi where, where, where both aspects were good. Yep. And I, I think yeah. had... Above and Beyond come out maybe five, ten years later, it would have ridden that wave. I think so. Yeah. I think it was definitely a wee bit before its time because it was a, uh, it wasn't episodic Fast and Furious type action. Yeah. It was an ongoing arc, mm -hmm. and that I think didn't do well because if you picked, you watch one episode, you were not entirely sure. Who the chicks were, who the women were talking no, about, you, yeah. who the AIs were, who yeah, I mean, the, the who the tanks were. You weren't entirely sure of these yeah. references. You've, so you've it, got you had to watch it from the beginning to understand yeah, what's did. happening. Well, they're old enough. It must have come out of roughly the same time as Babylon Five. I think it was. I think Babylon it's Five was that was it, yeah. yeah, yeah, I think it was because I remember ninety seven was uh, almost when it was climaxing Babylon 5, 97, mm, yeah. 98. Was... Yeah. So, but yeah. Do you know what this always reminded me of? Because I saw this later on. I didn't see this in the 90s, uh, mid 90s. I didn't see it when it first came out. I saw it in the 2000s. So it was probably out about 10 years before I got a hold of it. Mm. And and a wee bit, it, not, it's not a par for par for it. But it sort of reminded me of what a TV series of Starship Troopers would have been. Oddly enough, well, really odd you should say that, I'm currently watching Roughnecks, which is I've got Roughnecks. I've not watched TV it yet. series of Starship Troopers. I've not watched it yet. I have got it, but it's, I've not watched it. It's the, it's probably the best, it's, it's a, at the risk of going off that, it's a, it's based on the Heinlein book. Heinlein, 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 Heinlein. So I'm getting it out of the way for sat for, for when Alex winds me up. Um, but <laughs> the same unit, the same universe is the film. So the characters, some of the characters from the film, including the mixed, uh, the, yeah. the, 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 the the mixed the, the mixed um, male and female. Uh, that, but yeah. they just had. I mean, most of the characters are, are there. From, so, for example, they've got that they've only got Radchak. For example, they've got Radchak was a teacher rather than having um Dubai. But one thing they did have that I really, really liked um, in the episode I've just watched, they do flashbacks very similar to the book. They do flashbacks to training, Rico, and Sergeant Zim is in it, and he's voiced by Clancy Brown. Which is good. I must really? admit, it's just that's that's what this reminded me of. And I yeah. thought if they'd made a Starship Troopers TV show around mm -hmm. about the same time, a live action one, this is what 
I think it would have been because the way Starship Troopers you had the the jump ships and stuff like that. Mm. The, the technology was very similar, so I thought this is what it could have been. But mm. I don't know if that's what endeared me to above and beyond, mm. or it was just the certain aspects throughout. Mm. Obviously, you had some big names in it, and I um, let it started off the first person. Believe it or not, you see is the commander of the the colony. Mm -hmm. And I remember him because my mum used to watch Na Neighbours, a U uh, Australian soap, and he was in that. Oh, He'd been in a load of other stuff. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. I'm just trying to see if I can see mm -hmm. who I'm it was. Tem I'm tempted to wonder if... if um... The writers were inspired in any way by Starship Troopers. Ah, well, you've got it was Glenn Morgan and James Wong. Yeah, I don't. I could have been. Well, let's not forget that Halo was an actual thing at the time too, wasn't it? Yeah, that's that's true. Yes, it could, yeah, it could have. It could have been one of those ones. It was a mix of they're looking for. Uh, oh yeah, militaristic series. They've done a bit. They've looked. They've watched. Halo, they've watched Starship Troopers, they've watched Star Trek, they've watched multiple other ones and just tried to bring something in together. Jag to was probably going at the time as well, so you got the you know the navy bit in there. Yeah, albeit that was a military that was a military um, police procedural. Uh -huh. It's a shame Roman uh, isn't here. I think he would uh, be able to lend a hand with some of. I, I anything that tries to uh, to do military procedural in any fashion, I love it. I just love it. Um, yeah, discipline, training, and applying that training to your mission and duty calls, and you're on patrol, and you know. Yeah. And then there's all this other stuff later on top. You know, political drama. What's really going on? Who are these alien guys? And it's all yeah. it's all very chill. And, uh, you know, I'm sure that uh, any any people watching the show would have difficulty going, uh, you know, who's going to be in a relationship with who and that usual nonsense. Because yeah. it was kind of there on the surface, but it wasn't yeah, really yeah, pressing. There was, and this is another one of those shows that we were told didn't exist. A, a, a show with a diverse cast, males and females, strong males, strong females. Yep. Mm, yep. These things didn't exist according to accordingly but there you go you've got the five main um the the wild cards so you've got uh nathan shane um nice Vanessa, cooper yep. and paul wang so from that you've got two white guys a woman a, a white woman a black woman and a chinese guy yep. and that's the five main characters then you've got who's in charge of the fleet. Yep, yep, yep. Commodore Ross Tucker yep. Sherwood. He's <laughs> sorry, Chucker Smallwood. And he's been in a lot of really good stuff. He is really good. And he's just got that bearing that you can yeah, nice. I can see him in command. Yep. He was he was a an actually very good sympathetic um Earth Force investigation agent in uh Babylon 5. Uh huh. That's true. He actually had that's a watch right. one bit role in it, but he was one. And although he was on the side of the baddies, he wasn't. He was just doing investigation, and uh, he was doing his job. He just so yeah. happened to be part. It was part of a corrupt yeah. government. But yeah, I mean, he's been in a few things. Yeah, and he is really good. So, seeing him in this, I obviously had seen Babylon Five before I'd seen this. Although this was filmed before Babylon Five, it's really weird. It was just the cast. I mean, my favourite was Vanessa, and I think it was the very beginning when she said, uh, when somebody uh, was sitting young, what's your name? Uh, uh, Van uh, Van Van Fus. Oh, there's Van that thing. I don't know. <laughs> it was just the whole attitude. It just they had her with a friend's name. Oh, it's that friend. They were expecting. Mm -hmm. You're expecting some yes, but it's my family and it's this and it's my father's side. I don't. But they didn't. She just was. Uh huh. Don't know, <laughs> and I think it was just that wow. as you would normally expect them to explain why they've got a French name. 
in America, <laughs> it's just a case of, ah. it just it endeared me. Uh, and I really liked her character from then. She just seemed a wee bit, initially, she felt like, um, oh, the the woman in um, pl Police Academy. Remember, she would speak very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that type of thing. So you, she had the very quiet voice. Now that's some interesting well, in, in the action. She, she was not quiet. Got some <laughs> in, interesting trivia bits there on IMDb. Apparently, full scale models for the hammerheads were used. Oh, you saw that? You saw that when they were actually doing the no, but the thing, the, no, hold on, no, not that. They were made. They were created at a, a Royal Australian Air Force Base. Um, and more Glimmerkins claimed that they were being stored aboard a freighter before shipping. Russian crewmen were taking photos of them, thinking they were a new f fighter. <laughs> yeah. no, actually, the the sound effects have been on on Future Armor, and oh. most important, apart from one anyway, Kristen Cloak and Glenn Morgan are now married in 1998, and we've got four kids. They met on the set. I can see that happening. Yeah, but you know, yeah. but but and then again, I mean, as in. It doesn't yeah. say, but just, as far as I'm concerned, they're still married as well, which is nice. Yep. Mm. All right, Mr. Brun. Yeah. Cooper was named for Gary Cooper. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. There was just, I think the the characters in this war, it was one of those ones that the only one that was an ass at the beginning was meant to be an ass at the beginning, mm. which was Coop. Because yeah. he was a tank and he was always bullied, he was always put upon because he was an in vitro. He was meant to be that, so I'm not doing that, I'm not doing that. And then, but he would do things that were contrary to what he would say. Like, for instance, I'm not going to do that, I'm not going to do that. But when somebody would say, give him an order, he would jump to it and follow the order straight away. And then you're sitting there thinking, it's almost like he doesn't want to be in the Marines, but he's been put there by the court. He yeah. doesn't want to be there. But as soon as somebody gives him an order, he does it. No, there's no, I'm not doing that. It, it just seemed that sometimes it was a wee bit of a clash. It's almost like they didn't quite understand that. If you want to have him selling, not follow orders and stuff like that, then don't have him jump into the orders when he's first told it sometimes and then refusing the orders other times. You have to have him consistent. And I think at the very beginning, he was inconsistent. He yeah. was meant to be broody, he was meant to be moody, he was meant to be angry, but it just didn't come across when he was the two um, regimental sergeant major. And you saw the regimental sergeant major. Oh, what? yes, the gunny. The gunny, uh-huh. He was basically there again. It's just the basically yeah. there. And it was good seeing that as well because it gives it a more uh, marine type. Yes. You made mm -hmm. it feel a bit more was, realistic because was, you know he was a real gunny. Yeah, was saying, no, it, was, he, it wasn't that. It was um, Full Metal Jacket. He was hired on originally just as a an ex, consultant. Ex, consultant, yep. and he actually uh, showed them how to do it, and he actually yeah. started filming it. So. Yeah. Yeah, but it just seemed a bit real with that, and that's the parts yeah. that makes this an interesting watch. I mean, it's it's also an example of something that you you can't. I'm not sure you can get around or not. But um, you've got these highly trained pilots, and yes, I know that in the and I know the U.S. Marines, and I know in the that in the Marine tradition, everyone's a soldier, and that's perfectly fine. But you've got these highly trained pilots who spend eighty five percent of their time as ground pounding. Yes. Uh -huh. You know, whereas, yeah. you know, why not, you know, if you're going to do that, would it not, could you not have made them in, infantry or special ops team or something? Yes, um, but they had to have the space battles yeah. and they couldn't have had the space battles if it was all about an infantry. It wouldn't yeah. have been the same. Right. I suppose we best give a, a, brief, a brief synopsis of the first episode. Sure. And the only reason I'm saying that is because when Dolly just showed us that we kind of just start talking about it without people knowing what we're talking about <laughs> by giving us a brief synopsis. So this uh, Space Above and Beyond, 23 episodes, and it's about um, a flight 
and a, a sort of um, Marines. It's, they're basically in a battle to save Earth, I suppose, is everyone. What happens is it shows you um, five, well, actually shows you six, although there's more in the, the squadron, but it brings you in with six. One guy who is a, is a colonist who was taken off a flight because in vitro's had to be on, and he had a, a grudge against in vitro's after that. You had one who wanted to ju just joined up. That was Wong. He he joined up just because, but he didn't want people to shout at him. You had Vanessa joined up, but she, she just wanted to go do something on her own for herself. You had oh, sorry, that was Shane. It was somebody on her own. But you had these five characters, and Shane was Marine parents who yeah. were killed in the AI wars. And she just wanted to go and do something for herself, not expected by anybody else. Mm -hmm. And you had Hawks, Cooper Hawks, who was an in vitro, who got into trouble for defending himself and then got taken taken to, to jail and he got released to the Marines rather than go to jail from the court. Mm -hmm. And that's the fight. And you had Pags. Who was just a cheerful guy? He wanted to fly a a, a a hammerhead. He just wanted to fly. When we get my ship, we get it today, and he was all like that, very keen. And that's how it starts. So you basically get these five, six people brought together for different reasons. There's no war, nothing, and they just go through their basic training. God, it's and so in the meantime, crazy. two colonies are wiped out by aliens. The two colonies that Earth have put out have been wiped out by aliens. And the Earth goes to war. So as everybody's getting, all the experienced pilots and soldiers and all that are going out to fight, the the, the six, this, was it 278? 258? 5-8. They become the 5-8. The 5-8 uh, squadron basically yeah. are, go out, are, are just given a go and repair that beacon on Mars mission a basic mission, because they're not trained enough. And then when they get there, they find an alien mm -hmm. who crash lands and kills Pags, one of the characters. First time I saw this, I was surprised that you get introduced to these six guys and one of them gets killed, and you're sitting there thinking, oh, does that mean any of them could get killed? Yep. And I thought that was quite good, but it, obviously it was, uh, Pags got killed just so Hawks could actually have a reason to fight. Yeah. Because in vitros were known for not fighting. Not fighting in any wars because they were bred to fight, but they decided they didn't want to fight. Yeah, yeah, they were they were bred as um super soldiers almost, weren't they? Yes. And then, yeah. Mm. Then they refused to fight because it wasn't in their fight. Mm. So then once they capture that, they get a bit of rec recognition. But even though they've got recognition of bringing back an alien body so it can be experimented on, they, they're they still left behind to do gab duty, in effect. And, and they were put on the left rear flank of an attack. They were basically just to guard the attack just in case. And it turned out everything that they found out was a trap just to draw them away so the aliens could attack Earth. Mm. And it was them who actually defeated them, defeated the alien menace, held them up enough so yeah. the, reinforcements could, the reinforcements could come back. And they did a major blow to the aliens. Yeah. don't have a name for the aliens at the moment, but later on you get, they get called the chicks, the chiggers. Which was funny because the last time I heard something like that was watch a reading a two thousand AD comic where you had aliens and they were called the VCs and they called them the vacuum cleaners. Oh yeah, God, I the VCs. On, uh huh, the VCs, the vacuum. Yeah, and I forgot them. They they had they had a derogatory name for them and it was along the lines of chippers or something like that as yeah. well. 
and in this they had chiggers and basically it's to do with the VC. It's all to do with the Vietnam. So they, they used that because they didn't know who they were. Yeah, but chi yeah, and also of course ch chiggers is I'm not sure if we have them in this country. I know it's an American um term for a particular type of, of nat or might or something. I don't know if, if we have a, the same things out here with a different name. Oh yeah, yeah. We we have gnats and ticks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, but isn't, yeah. isn't chumming them right? Isn't chigger a type of of gnat or something? It I'm could sure be. Heard I, it. I think we've just settled on that. I don't. Think I, we that call them we, most of them. We call midges because mm -hmm. they're meat eating buggers. I'm, I'm I'm sure I've heard of them in that context. That's why I say. Um, yeah, I've definitely heard the term midge. I I do read a lot of Victorian science fic, uh, mm -hmm. Victorian fiction, so uh, midge comes up quite a bit mm -hmm. in British. Yes. Yeah, and it's basically. So they, they basically get a medal and they're thrown into the front line as the wild cards. And that's basically the the premise of the first episode. But I think the way the first episode was built was a slow burn. It basically it laid the foundations for the rest of the series. Yeah. It wasn't just a case of you're suddenly thrown in with these people and there's a war started and this is happening and that's happening. It laid the foundations of what they wanted to do, accomplish. Especially Nathan. He wanted to go out into space to meet his, his girlfriend who was on the manned mission that got destroyed. Mm. And if anybody survived from that, I'll be surprised. <laughs> geeks, that's right. It was the geeks. Yes. The VCs, it was the geeks. And that's what it reminded me of. It's just one of those things. So, but what did you think of the car, the, the characters? Not necessarily the cast, because the cast were actually really good. I think there was none of the cast that actually fell a bit short, but that's just me. But what did you think of the characters, the build-up of the characters within the first episode? Hmm. I'm someone, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm, um... I'm, I'm in agreement with some people. Though I think Loki did a watch of the series watched a few couple of years ago, and I'm totally in agreement that Nathan was a whiny bitch. Yes. Um, <laughs> he was meant uh, to be whiny from the. He was meant to be, yeah. He got uh -huh. But I mean, yeah. I mean, I thought they were they were they were all, they were well done. Um, I mean, I, I think Shane was probably my favourite. Shane was uh, definitely the the most the, the the most charismatic of the whole crew. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you're talking about Alan Dale, was the governor? Yes. Yep. Alan Dale. He was basically the governor of the thing. I mean, he. I remember him from um, Neighbours, but he's yeah. been in other stuff. I think he was in Lost. He was in. A lot. Yeah. He's been in a load. He's even probably been really most of Aus Australians. <laughs> He, he, he started as an Australian soap, the same Australian soap uh, um, Gladiator, which you call him, Russell Crowe was on. But he was a main character in this soap, whereas Russell Crowe was just, he appeared in it a couple of episodes. So it was an Australian, most Australian actors appeared in this soap, but he was in this soap as a main character for a while. Yeah. And then he started appearing in um, movies and TV shows in America. That's where I remember him from, but it was the very it was neighbours where I first saw him. A wee bit, nineteen eighty five to twenty nineteen. He's in neighbours. <laughs> yes. Thank God, up. Yeah, but he actually he, he went a, on to be in a remake of Dysentery. <laughs> Sorry, Dynasty. I mean, sort of Dynasty, Dynasty. Got to get it right. Yes, but it's it's the same again. He's been in a lot, but yeah. he started in that, and that's mm. where I remember him from because yeah. he always played the main character. But in this. Where it starts with him, you think, oh, and then he disappears, he gets killed. And you're sitting there thinking, that's a, a, I suppose at the time it was probably one of his first forays into American TV. So, yes, he appeared and dying, it's no something. But when I was had watched that he'd been in other movies, and then you see him in there, you think, big actor, and then he gets killed, <laughs> and you're yeah. sitting there, oh. <laughs> But it's that type of thing. It's just the way this introduces the characters. I just thought it was good. But mm. you had Cooper, 
who was the money. It was almost like a big kid um, when he tried to kiss Shane and she turned around and he goes, in a huff, I'm doing that and I'm leaving and, hmm, and stuff like that. And you think, big kid. So he's meant to act like a big kid. Then you've got hmm. Nathan, who's whiny. Well, one day they, they canted at 16 or something. Yes, something like that. So stupid. No, they were actually uh, decanted younger and then trained. And oh, educated, yeah. But then what, it was um, cancelled. The program was cancelled <laughs> because of that. So he was he was still <laughs> young when the, the AI was. So hmm. he was just released into the wild, as they say. Because there is, there is um, heartbacks to it. So you see things from his memory in the past. Talk, and it's, it's all about the school and how he ran away from the school, what they were doing and stuff like that. So so he was in that, but he was the very, he played an almost um, big kid character, almost like he didn't have understanding of adults. So the way he acted was like a big kid. Then, as I said, you've got Nathan, who was the whiny one. Mm. They all settled after a wee while, but initially it was, it was good laying of the foundations of each of the characters, and it gave them places to grow, and that's what I liked. It wasn't a case of they were fully fledged, and it was just a case of a level, this is the character, and that is it. The characters came in with certain flaws, and throughout the series, they grew as characters. Every one of them, even Wong, who did Jimmy, um, was it Jimmy? Paul Wong. It was um, Joel De La Fruit. Joel Fruity. I can't even pronounce that. No time. But Paul Paul Wong. Joel De La Fuente. Fuente, that's the one. But Paul Wong actually, he came in as a very quiet, didn't like loud noises. By the end of it, he was just. He was in there shouting and bawling with the rest of them. And it was a good growth for his character as well. So he was a wee bit laid. He was very timid initially and he got picked on by the sergeant majors. Where's your battle cry? Ah! And then the two of them screaming in his ear when he screams back. But I thought it was every one of the characters had a good growth to them. So what did you think? Stephen, what did you think about the characters? I thought that they were good. I, I as I said, I, I need to watch the rest of the show. I'm definitely compelled to watch the rest of it. So uh, am I. Yes. I was uh, I was put off a little bit by the acting talent, um, USA and PJ. That you did you did enjoy the performances. Yes. Uh, I took a little bit of issue. They felt a little green to me. I think um, that's why it worked because they were new into the the military, so the greenness actually came through with the way they were talking. Yeah, they, 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 it was a wee bit stilted conversations, and I think it worked within that. Will you imagine if you'd got um, established actors get in it and they're meant to be green, and they they, they would either it would just seem too seamless the way they were doing this stuff. Whereas they've yeah. been a bit green, and I wish that uh, Nathan, um, Nathan, and the young lady that he was performing against in the first episode, that that chemistry was solidified a little stronger. Yeah, yes, the so that you girlfriend. could feel his imperative for the yes. mission to save her. Um, that would have been nice if that was a little more solid. Um, plus, also, uh, uh, the tank. Yes. Uh, uh, Cooper, he, uh, him playing around with the video game system where he's in a VR setup and practicing with his pistol and stuff like that. I, I, you yes. know, there were there were production values that were hurting the property a little bit here and there. Um, yes, that uh, you kept. I I kept getting taken out of the episode um, because it felt recognizable. It, I don't know. There's something about it. I still think that they're working on techniques today where uh, they get around these issues where mm. I, I kept losing track. I'm like, wait a second. Are we on a battleship? Are we on Earth? Are we on the ground? Are we in space? Like you couldn't tell what environment you were in particularly. I kept losing track somehow. 
I, th there is aspects of that. I'm just actually looking. Um, they were talking about Arlie Emery in the show. Mm. And somebody says, Colin, he is actually in it. He's, he's actually uncredited, but he is actually in it. He was in the pilot. No, 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 no. That was Alan Dale, my question was answering to. Oh. Mel Melvin had said, wasn't Alan Dale in Stargate? Oh, yeah, I was right. just looking that up myself, yeah, too. When I couldn't see sorry, I thought he was talking there. about the... No. Um, uh, sorry, I basically missed that. Oh. Just goes to show, I'm actually not paying attention. I'm actually too busy actually talking about the program. Lots, lots I, I, had a, I had a younger brother... <laughs> I had a younger brother who was really into the uh, Japanese series uh, Gundam, with all the, uh, which is also very Robo, uh, Robo uh, Starship Troopers. Yes. Mm. And he was constantly pressing me to like watch it, and I'm like, I can't. It's like it just screws up with my schedule with some other things, and it just it just never got to happen. But he was really enthusiastic with it, and his kung fu buddies that were also into Gundam were really into the show as well. So it was satisfying a military pomp and ceremony audience. They were really into it. Mm -hmm. So, See, I, I, you know, I'm looking forward. I, yeah. I think it's one of those shows that it did get cancelled before its time, but there's a lot of programs out uh, uh, shows that were good got cancelled. Look at Firefly; they got yeah. cancelled before their time, and it's a case of if you if they had actually started maybe two or three years later, they might have actually continued and 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 got two or three seasons to build on. But mm. I think this is one of those ones, as you said, a, a couple a few years later, it may have just slotted right in and got three or four seasons. Yeah. yeah, I mean, look at the success of Babylon uh, of uh, Battlestar Galactica. That that yeah. that saw great success, and it's basically the same show, uh, you know, except with an mm. IP on top. Mm. That's true. Uh -huh. So, but it's just a shame that this one didn't get the same look because I thought it was actually a really good premise of the mm. show. Just mm -hmm. uh, there was, as you said, there was a few. Um. I wouldn't even say they were acting folks. There was a few writing folks in this. Yeah, yeah. Like, for instance, when um, Vanessa gives the the chig some water, she sees gills and she squirts it in the gills. And then it starts... Bloop, and then they turn around and says, why did it kill itself? And I'm sitting there thinking, did you just watch what you did? You poured water into those gills, then things came out and things came out of the gills. So how would you class that as it killing itself? It was mm. things like that. It was almost a case of that scene got shot separate and they just shoved the two of them together. Yeah. yeah. Blair, it's, yeah, we, we mentioned that earlier on as we said, yeah, that he's odd. But I think it's it's one of the things with storytelling. You know, um they had to be they kind of had to be both for the sake of the story. Yes. I, mean, I, I, I agree with you. I, I, that took me out of it as well. I, I personally think it would perhaps have been better if they'd mainly been um, ground pounders. Ground pounders, been... special yeah. ops, And they that they brought the piloting in somewhere else. Um, See, the or thing even... is, you could have done what Starship Troopers did have them separated, so you had the... Yeah. Um, what was it, a case of the... Um, the grunts die, but the flyboys fly. The navy does a fly, and the MI does the dying. Yeah, so it would have been that way. They could have had a a unit. So they've got their unit. They might have had their own aircraft, which means they would have had a pilot involved. Yeah. And they, then they would have had escorts. So they could have had it with the, that. So the two pilots might have. Uh, they would have been eight or the three pilots, the pilot and two escorts for each for the crew, and then you would have had a bit of both. And it would have separated the two of them aside, but I think it's one of those things. I tried to actually say what would happen if you had uh, something where they were going to different planets. Yeah. You've got these aircraft that can take off from a planet and fly in space, which we all know Babylon 5 described it. That the yeah. aerodynamics, if because you've got an aerodynamic in 
Earth. Doesn't it, it doesn't tie in with how yeah. you would fly? So, because remember, they had in Babylon 5, they had the Star Furies and they had to get them specially modified so they had they could fly in atmosphere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah so, and even then, they were they were slogging it too. Yes. So, I think, they, they, as you said, I think they just tried to bring it in. What would happen if they had these pilots that they just trained everybody to fly and ground pound? And I think that was the premise of the show, to try and say, this yeah, is how we're right. bringing it in. You're so right. they're Marines who can fly, so they're still mm-hmm. ground pounders when they need to be, but they're pilots when they don't. But I think I, I've I could I could be wrong, and again, it's gonna be um, Roman would be the one of my next, but I've, I've got a, I have a, I have a feeling that usually the general idea is with with the US Marines, because the Royal Marines don't have pilots, the Royal Marines are infantry, pure and simple. Um, that the idea is that they they're basically their flying skills are for um. To support the marines so they're not likely to get that much into um air to air combat unless they're defending a, a marine you know I, I, th- I think that's a general idea i get i could be wrong what's these days who knows um but it's i mean the alternative would perhaps have been to say okay well we've got two lots of heroes one lot of heroes are pilots one lot of heroes are three yeah ground pounders. and it would have worked so um, they could have actually between yeah like, or something you know. because um it could have actually instead of all being about the the wild cards it could have been about the saratoga yeah the ship so sometimes it's the pilots sometimes it's all ground pounders but i think that's like the original Battlestar Galactica. They wanted something like that, whereas the the pilots for the Vipers were the ones that would do if they needed to do something on the ground. The pilots would land and then get out, and they yeah. would have the firearms, and they would be the ones attacking the Cylons and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. So I think it was a case of they were trying to mix in a wee bit of that. But I think if they'd made the show about the Saratoga, the cast would have just been a wee bit too big, considering. Yeah. Yeah. Especially considering they did have some nice aspects on it. Like, for instance, yes, you saw the the makeup of the Hammerhead, which I love the Hammerheads. I think those ships look great. And I've yeah. still not come across a decent size hammerhead model i would have loved to get hold of but the hammerheads were great and you saw them made a few life-size ones practical effect ones which in effect somebody could build it with um um, wood and put wheels on it and it would look good on the ground however the fact is they didn't need that and it's the same as battlestar galactica you always see them get onto the climbing into the viper or they were in, in, and the vipers were in the tubes. Whereas these ones, they were just going into the canopy and it was yeah. sinking down. And I thought well, that was a really good way to actually cut down the effects. They didn't need to do a lot of effects because they could do all that and then they have the effects of the ships going out. And yeah. it actually did cut it down. And also, you can imagine they've got, they just take one of those, put it against a, a green screen, and then film it as the pilots. And it works. Yeah. So, but I thought the practical effects of the, the hangar bay was really good. So you didn't mm. have a lot of the ships hanging around. It was just the pods for the, the pilots. And it just got dropped into the ship. I thought it was a good aspect of it. Yeah. And it looked really good in that respect. And it did look military because it was quite drab one colour throughout, mm. so it was near the usual. You can imagine if they were doing sci-fi, there'd be lights up the wall and there would be multicolours along the, the the the. it would be like a dado rail around, so it would be highlight and low light colours. Right. Whereas this one, it was very military. It, not so much bleak, but it was just like a military dark a colour, metallic colour throughout, and it did look the part. So there was good aspects in it as well. But to me, there was more good than bad. And that was the good thing about this. Nowadays, you get more bad than good. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. it, let's not forget too that this was going up against Star Trek, Star Trek, uh, Star, Stargate SG One as well was on Showtime at the time, and that was all military solid, yeah. and present day too. So it was much more palatable to a normie audience. But uh, I remember listening to uh, Michael talking about his Babylon Five project and how much pressure he was under that they were basically telling him, you're wasting your time. Star Trek and Star Wars have locked down sci-fi for the next 20 years. And uh, they weren't going to give him money just on that precedent alone. Yep. So, Yeah, which I'm, I love Stargate. I got the Stargate and Stargate Atlantis, the full season's DVD mm-hmm. box. Sets. Got and Babylon 5 turned out to be a legendary epic series. <laughs> yeah. I'm just yep. glad that every time they talk about actually remaking it, they go, it goes. Ooh. Yeah, me too. Uh, well, JMS is supposed to have said that a lot of it's been done. Yeah. So, um, oh, no, yeah. no, no. It's something coming next year with the remaining cast. Yes. But. I think I think that because you because I think what they're going to do is have a pilot and the remaining cast will be in it at points. Mm. But well, the thing is, they can't have. Well, they could have Bruce Boxler in it, but remember there was they did the the final one where they did the bit where um, Delane comes in uh, yeah. because they're talking about Sheridan how he. It, it wasn't as good as the history paints them, and she yeah. does it. And does it. I, so if they have it there and Dele- and Sheridan's in it, he would have to make reference to his wife. But um, that's that's only if they're um, if you're, they're doing something in the existing timeline. If they're doing sort of doing some sort of remake or something, and they're just having the original the cast make um, cameos. A little yeah. bit like the Lost in Space movie, that would be a different thing. Yeah, I suppose so. Because they've done that. You look at the, the monsters, they did that with the monsters. Had they did that with Starsky and Hatch, I think, didn't they, as well? They did, yeah, because they jumped out the cans and went, and there's the original Starsky and Hatch, which mm. I thought that movie was crappy anyway. They did, in fact, they, they also did it with um, the remake of the professionals, where they or, or at least they at least referred back to. Bodie and Doyle. I don't, I'm not sure if um, Lewis Collins or Martin Joe ever appeared in it. I don't think they did. Um, but they certainly refer back to it. Yeah. So here's hoping they don't do that. But yeah. although I would love to see this either continued or remade properly, I wouldn't want it done now. No. One point no. I thought they need to actually revisit that. Now I don't want them to revisit it. I don't even want them to actually revisit anywhere in, in the village. Yeah, I want them to stay as far away as possible. Yeah, because mm. you could see how they would get their their little dirty paws on this property, and yeah. they would make it like who's sleeping with who, and we would always be on the ship, and it would always be the sex thing, and yeah, you know. And the thing is, they could remake it. And and not change any of the characters, yeah, mm-hmm. because they wouldn't have an excuse. Because who ends up in charge of the wild cards? Shane. Yeah, She's, he ends up in charge because you think it's going to be Nathan the way he's starting, but it ends up at Shane. They all turn to, yeah, you know I mean, well, yeah, because I think she she graduated higher. I think. Well, that's, oh, that, again, that's... The fact is they set the premise up in yeah. the beginning. That it was going to be Nathan. Because even the first mission, even in when they were in the the crew, uh, the I can't even remember what you would class that as the cat. It was the, it's not a carrier; it's a um, transport. So they were in the transport, and he was the one telling them to calm down and do this. So it looked like they were he was going to be in charge. Yeah, and then when the shit hit the fan, he lost it, and she didn't take over. Yeah. So, but then again, it's that he, he, these days, apparently, Shane and Dan Foose would be an item. Um, you would probably have Wong and Wong would probably be with um, Cooper for the uh, not for the for the racism angle. Because let's be honest, 
Coop and the Tanks will racism as so often in the 90s and anything before that 2005 done well. Yeah, yeah, because they wanted to show you how bad it was with having something generic out there that you could get behind and think, oh, that's really bad. Yeah. But they're actually pointing it in a way that shows you that if you think that's bad, then racism in general or bigotry in general is bad. And that's what they were aimed for. So, yeah. Nathan exactly. Hawk, Nathan Hawk would be guaranteed race swapped for sure. The tank. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They would race swap them just so that they could harp on their little message. He'd be yeah. a mermaid. You know, I mean, even the scene with him cutting the hole in the back of his helmet so that his his in vitro uh, slot yeah, on the he, back he, of his head he, fit he, in the he, helmet. His nipple. Uh -huh. Yep, yep. They would make a big deal out of that. They don't make it. They don't make it uh, everything for us. You know, they yeah. just, they disregard us. You know, and you yeah. get that whole old timey, you know, plantation nonsense going on. Yeah, but that's why I'm glad. Yeah. I, I'm hoping they don't touch this, but eventually they, it's it's they've got no creative. They, they're looking through everything. They're looking through absolutely everything to actually make a remake of because they can't make stuff themselves. So they have mm -hmm. to actually change everything that's already there. People say it's to completely destroy our, uh, the Western culture. I think it's just pure fact is they've got no talent. There's nobody with talent. Oh, there's very few with talent. Let's put it that way. There is a couple of good movies that pops up or a good TV show pops up. But you're always sitting there waiting. Yeah. Or well, so, I mean, notice bits and pieces here and there. But the, th the fact is, I think it's not a deliberate act. I think it's just an absolute lazy act. I, 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 I think it's a combination. I mean, they I think it's a combination. I think, I mean, um, I don't know if anybody knows. Um, oh, I'm going to make sure I get the bit in this one. JP Sears, I think, JP Awakens channel. But he's very good. He does some really good stuff about what he's, And he did one today comparing 1950s Hollywood to modern day Hollywood. <clears throat> Literally, it was a case of everything in 1950s Hollywood, they said they were in favor of. Like good storytelling. Now it's the other way around. You know, it's very well done. I see the one it was a producer giving it from an old producer, a, a producer who no longer works. Is that the one? No, he was. He's. He was just himself, and he's. He, he was. No, but uh, is he not a, an ex-producer? I'm not. I think he's a comedian because he said uh -huh. he's, he's. He's got. A, a, I think it's a bit like Stephen Crowder, and he's. He's also a comedian. So he's also got. Um, well, he was advertised against one. one. He's. Yeah. It's, uh, it's called JP. Um, Awaken with JP, I think, or JP reactions to channels, but no, but it's, but I, I also think that they've got, um, I think there is an intent to not necessarily destroy, but um, the rat in particular, I think, and the, the, the rat on Amazon, they their intention is to make their version the only version, so to, yeah. to, to, to retroactively destroy the, the last ones, and they've got no, um. They've got no talent. Well, they may have talent, but they no, can't I think tell you've stories. Got no talent. No, no. Well, they, no. they, I think the point is they can't tell stories because tell that by the, the they're line. terrified yeah, of offending right. anybody. Yeah, and also you can tell by the language they do. They're basically just writing their own life. Yeah. Well, and as I was, as we were saying before, um, there's, there's also the fact that you look at it and you you see you've got people who's who's who've got three or four writing credits and they're in charge of running a bloody a major film or a major series rather than bring them in and have them as part of a team of more experienced people so they can get experience no we, yeah. we put the divert we the, the the only thing we're interested in are you is is, is are you the right diversity box yeah. checked yeah and that's where it goes it shows you the difference between hmm. 95 because there's there's a cast even the writers, but it's a diverse cast. It's done well. Hmm. Let's, like we were talking about Space 1999 and FFSI yesterday. It's a cast that you didn't think, oh, he's black. Oh, 
That's a woman. Oh, you didn't. You so you mm. watched the program and it was good. The characters were all interested. You didn't actually think, oh, they, he only got that part because, or she only got that part because. You just watched the program, and the characters were great. You didn't think about anything. I mean, the first time I watched this, I'm sitting there thinking, that's no realistic. Look at the Commodore of the ship. He's black. He can't have that job. Of course not. It was a case of it was a character. And, it was a really good character and you enjoyed yeah. it. You didn't actually think anything. And it's the fact that they think, they think it themselves, so they assume everybody thinks like them, which is wrong. Because, believe it or not, we don't. So mm. anytime when you say you don't like it because of racism, no, you wrote it because of racism and you deliberately did yeah. think because of racism that you have got it. And then you're putting it on us as if that's how we think because that's how you're thinking about it. And that's the thing. Whereas this, I don't think anybody ever complains and says, oh, this is rubbish because there's a woman in charge or there's a black man in charge or this is yeah. in charge. Yeah, it was just a case of, this is hmm. this, th why most people are saying, why did this get cancelled? Because it was really getting good. It started okay. It's I, I can't say it started fantastic, but it started okay. Good left. It laid good groundwork that for the characters to grow, the things it's, to happen. And by the end of it, I was getting really into it. And it's a case of I don't want to go to the next episode because that's nearer the end. That's nearer mm -hmm. the end. You knew this, there was only one season, but it was still. What this show is, gave me is what gave me an abiding detestation. Of cliffhanger series endings, yes, but that was a standard thing. They always did this uh, cliffhanger well, you know, I, 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 because I, they were always hoping to get the next one. Yeah, and the, the, the excuse was, the only, if we left the, we left the audience on a cliffhanger, you right. should give us at least another one, and yeah. that was why they did it. I mean, that's I mean, that's that's the thing. I mean, it's, it, it may seem to be that that's the first one that was sort of was cancelled, but I mean, that's what I mean. I've, I've got to the point after that. I mean, this is back in the days of video recorders. I got to the back of that, and uh, I would recall the last episode of a show, and I'd skip to the end. And if the end said to be continued, that's it. I'd leave the bloody tape until the next season came out. Just yeah, to see, make sure yeah, the next season that, did come out. See, the thing is, I remember mm. as far back as Soap. Mm. Oh, that was deliberate. That was deliberate because they knew they were going to get a next season, but they yeah. wanted to leave it hoping that they would get another season. So they deliberately left it so you didn't know what was going to happen to Danny and Bert. And Bert. So I understood why they did it. But eh, I'm used to it. So mm -hmm. if I'm enjoying a series and it gets to the point and it finishes, and I know it's finishing and there's not another part coming, it's the same as like when I picked up the um, Space Above and Beyond and um, Firefly. I knew hmm. they only had one season and they didn't get to finish the whole story. Like, fair mm -hmm. enough, you had Serenity with Firefly, but that was slightly different. So it wasn't technically the end of that story. It was a different story. It just gave you the characters. But so things like this and other programs where you get one season and it's actually you're enjoying it, but you know it's not getting another season. And even hmm. a, a cliffhanger, I'll still pick them up on DVD and watch them because I enjoyed them. It's just you get to the end and think, oh. but yeah. I do. I know I'm I'm terrible. I'm terrible for that. I'm quite happy to watch something that it goes nowhere if it's enjoyable up to yeah. that point. Whereas if something's finished, it comes to a finish, and it's crap, I won't watch it. Like for instance, Game of Thrones. I'm glad I never watched that, and I ain't going to watch it because even no matter how people say it was really good, I'm not going to watch something. To the end where uh, it's got a crap ending. I would rather not watch it. Whereas if something's really good up to the end and it's to be continued and it's still good up until that point, I'm quite happy to watch it up until that point. Yeah. Because I'm enjoying yeah. the episodes by episode. Just so happens that you yeah. don't get the finish of the I mean, story. I've, I've got to, I, I I tend to think I don't know, maybe it's just maybe it's just a million excuses, but I tend to think that um cliffhanger endings to a series um, I tend to look at it differently. Maybe I'm just looking at it from a different angle, but I tend to say, um, you've got a cliffhanger ending, so you've got you're trying to rope people in for the next, so you, you're actually not sufficiently confident in your product that people are going to come back and watch it again. That you've got to put a hook in there, 
yeah. You know, that's well, the way I tend to look at it. But See, the thing is, I look at it as they're doing the flashback to the old style, uh, like Flash Gordon, Buck Rogers, mm -hmm. the old black and white Buster Crab. <laughs> yeah. And it was always a cliffhanger ending because it was designed to go into the cinema every week. Oh, yeah. So they wanted people to come back in. So that was what the, it was the drag. I think that's where a lot of them a cliffhanger ending because yeah. a lot of them grew up watching that. So when they're, they're writing it, they, a lot of them it's a case of this is what they're used to. So they put the cliffhanger ending. Yeah, but the, 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 the thing is, they've done that, but there is a massive difference. I mean, if you get some, like, as you said, the, 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 the back words, that, that, that was a serial. That was a serial. And that was that was one long story. That was that was a serial, so it was broken up, and you knew they were going to get the next bit because the whole season, the whole season had been made. Whereas the ending of a season, not an episode, but an, at the ending of a season. Um, yes, you know, uh, I know they the, didn't the end, actually yeah, have the same um, cliffhanger ending at the end of the season. Because although, having said that, I'm not entirely certain. Space Above Me On was something weird where it was one and a half seasons or something, I think. I've got a feeling that although it, it only, I think we've only been shown well, it was, I think it was one only the season. one season. Uh, let's see, it'll tell you on IMDb what the class that has. Yeah. I'm sure it was just the one season, 23 episodes. That they, they, they'd actually done one season and, 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 and another bit to it, but it was cancelled. I'm not sure. Season, only season one, 23 episodes. Uh, Disney yeah. have the option for a second season, only five episodes. Yeah. They did that with a few things. Uh, yeah. They finished halfway through the episodes yeah. for some reason or well, other. 20, 20, 23 is about right for for one season or for, yeah. for a complete season rather than yeah. something like rather than a sort of. A, well, it, I, it was. I mean, now I it miss a season, proper but I season isn't. lengths. Yes. Uh, you know. We, we don't have that anymore. We've got six, we've got seven, maybe nine, maybe ten if we're lucky. See, that's the difference between the US and the UK. Yeah. In the UK, a season was six episodes for a lot of things. Oh? Because they, they basically, there was a lot of things. So you would have maybe like 99 o'clock news, that would be maybe six or eight episodes yeah. for, per season. But they would have, after that was done, they would have something else very similar lined up to be filmed. And the BBC and all that were churning out a lot of stuff. You, it would tend to be sort of six to um, 13 weeks, I think, because 13, 13 weeks was is the a quarter. Most, uh, 13 was the, yeah. weeks was the most, because that was half. Uh, that was halfway through uh, the, the year. One of each, oh, Unless you're something like Doctor Who, where it's about 40 episodes a year. On the, some 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 of them did. I mean, some you know, some of the early seasons of Doctor Who, they really were almost all year round. They were much longer. I didn't realize that that was a European thing. Yeah, it's uh, that's the way we we used to actually yeah. grow up watching it. So, like, I could pick up a TV show from Mines, and it'll have maybe four seasons of six episodes per season. Hmm. And the 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 other thing that we don't have. Um, we may have the occasional um, the, the 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 occasional break for a sporting event, unfortunately. Um, but yeah. we but don't have. Stopped. Yeah, but we yeah, but we we, we don't have a a, set, a three month hiatus. You know, we don't have some stuff in like seems happening to some of you. Like I noticed a lot of the CW shows I used to watch, for example, they come up to something like. Um, Maybe um, they come up to Thanksgiving, perhaps, or something, or the Super Bowl, or whatever, and then it would just stop, and it would be off three months off. Yeah, you know, you you do that, and a lot of the times, that's what you know they'll, they'll put a, a, a cliffhanger or something, or two part episode, episode, two part story, and the first part, then they go to a hiatus yeah. for three six months. Do you know, I can tell you the difference you can see straight off with between the US and the UK coupling, right? Coupling, Stephen Moffat's coupling. They did four seasons. Season one had six episodes. Season two had 
six episodes, see, uh, no, eight episodes, nine, nine episodes for season two, and season three had seven episodes, and season four had six episodes. When they put it in the US, season one had 26 episodes. Whew. What, they just combined the three seasons together? No, they, they basically added bits and pieces. It was, it was an absolute trap. So you basically stop. took bits out of here and there, but the, the first season, uh, the, I think um, one of them gets pregnant. Um, Susan gets pregnant in it. Is it Susan? Sorry. Aye, Susan gets pregnant in it in season two and season three is all about her being pregnant in this the end of season one still no pregnant they've just all got together the ones that were meant to get together and they changed a lot of the humor to be more american and they added the it, and then it. it was not I mean, very well done at all so if you're ever going to watch couple the first three seasons of coupling are fantastic when they removed when jeff left Richard Cole left and they brought in Oliver. Uh, season four was not good. Well, not as good. It was okay at the best. But first three seasons of Coupling, Stephen Moffat's UK Coupling, if you get a chance, watch that. If I would av av avoid season four and I would definitely avoid the US version. The, easy, the only thing I would say is watch episode one of the US and you'll see how they've changed it just to be more American with the humor and the way people act. Yeah. Yeah. I never got that. I mean, you know, I grew up watching Japanese anime on Saturday morning cartoon set, you know, setups and the Americans did that all the time. They would infuse all this nonsense into there. Like, I don't know, G force, like suddenly becoming a rock band when they're off duty, you know, it's like so <laughs> silly. It's like, come on. Don't Scooby do this. There's no reason to do that. Yeah, and I don't understand. They're bringing in a foreign property. Why yeah. not celebrate that it's a foreign property? You know, like let's learn about that culture. If you're going to add yeah. anything, add little quips about what this culture means. You know. <laughs> yeah. See, they did that the same in the U.S. In the U.K. When we were growing up, we had Skippy, which was Australian. We had Lassie. We had Champion of Wonder Horse. We had um, the Mysterious Cities of Gold, which was Brazilian. And we had a Spanish one, uh, the Flashing Blade. We and had, they, were, we, they, they were dubbed into English, but in effect, we knew they were from. We also had the animation. It was, was it Aqua, Aqua Lad? It basically you had a Japanese one. Marine Boy. Marine Boy. Big big eyes, so it was meant to be. Oh, European. yeah, I remember Marine Boy. Eye. Yeah, it had the, the big eyes so he did because he was meant to be European, but it was a Japanese anime dubbed into English, and we we all knew it was a a Japanese thing, even grown up, because of the eyes. You could tell it was Japanese by the eyes straight away because if it was meant to be European. The eyes were overly large. Mm. Which, it was it was still fantastic, and we knew, we were aware where they came from, and we we understood they just dubbed them so we could watch them. But the great the great stories, and that mm. was the thing, the ones that needed to be dubbed. Obviously, things like the uh, Lassie we didn't need dub because we could understand it, or uh, Skippy the Australian stuff we, we could we, understand. We, it. I mean, it was it tended to be. You had some of those, but some of those ones you mentioned. They were certainly. From my memory, they were ones we had during. There, there were kid shows that we had during the school holidays. Yes, uh, and most Saturday mornings we had something on for the kids. Mm, that was the kids' I mean, morning. I, I, I remember them because because Saturday Hill was Flashing Blade, yep. White Horses, um, Bell and Sebastian. Oh, Bell and Sebastian. A load of these that were European, Eastern oh, yeah. European ones. Yeah, you had, uh, as I said, you would have like Champion of Mother or Grizzly Adams. Yeah, Champion, like well, that. again, imported from the state, yeah. Well, we'll remember, yeah, yeah. But, so we'd have all these. We'd also have Zorro. Yeah. We would uh, We would have a lot of the old the old stuff shown in black and white. It was great. But whereas this stuff, 
you can just imagine what they would do in this stuff now. Yeah, I don't want to imagine. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's true. Mash doesn't have candle after. And I've got the one without the candle after. And oh, with wow. the candle after, it just looked weird. God, I would like to weird. watch that. That would be a treat to watch it without the candle after. Yeah. yeah. Battle of the Planets as well. Remember that one? And thank you, mm -hmm. PJ. I've now got the theme tune to Marine Boy running around inside my head. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's the same idea. It was growing up with these stuff, right? Fair enough. This was in the uh, 70s. I only saw uh, the 90s. Yeah. And I saw it 10 years later. So I saw it, what, 2000, uh, between 2003 and 2005. So you're talking about at least 20 years ago was the first time I saw this. And I loved it. Yeah. Um, lot, I'm, I'm, I, I didn't. I'm, I didn't get much of the Japanese ones. I think I mean, I think, Marine Boy. I remember, um, but G Force and Battle of the Planets. No, I don't, I don't think I caught those. I remember um, Battle of the Planets. Now, uh, yeah, some some of them. But yeah, I don't. I don't remember many. Yeah, how about Star say, Blazers? Maybe Speed Racer. Nope. Nope. We didn't get it. Huh? Don't get them in the I UK. I'm not sure. I certainly don't. We, recognize them. we would get things like the mysterious cities of gold. And yeah, stuff. that was and a cartoon, wasn't it? That was a cartoon. Yeah, yes, and I I think, the I Aztec Empire. Yeah, they and were, there was an animated <laughs> series about Heidi, like the, the devised from the Heidi. Uh, oh no, we, we saw it. We saw the 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 live action version yeah. of Heidi. Oh, we got go. it and it was basically brought over from Holland and it was dubbed. But it was Heidi. Mm. It basically, we got that. We used to watch that on a Saturday morning as well. And they were all interspared. There was different ones throughout. I used to sit and watch it with my dad. Me and my dad would sit and watch Zorro mm. and stuff like that. It was great. Yeah. Banana yeah. splits. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh-oh, jungle. <laughs> but there's uh, all those things. And that's what we grew up with. Then they actually stopped doing a lot of the shows and then brought on um, multicolored swap shop or Tizmo's. Yeah. And stuff like that, and it was more of a kids' game show, come entertainment show. Each of them, and it yeah, took away a lot of them, but they would still have them interspersed here and there. So they would have like Tiz was, and they would have one or two of the shows instead of it having from eight o'clock in the morning till lunchtime, four hours of just kids' show. They would have two or three of them. Then they would have this three hour or two hour show for kids. And every and maybe twice throughout it, they would have a fifteen minute things like the banana splits used to do as well. You would have a cartoon. They would have some dubbed foreign bit, and it was always fun. But that is basically, as is it hindsight, we all think they're great. But yeah, this you can just imagine this being repurposed like some of the other good stuff that we grew up with mm. and there I was a tv show there was a tv show that was coming to mind and i was trying to look up the title but it seems to have vanished from the internet um fairly recently it was a sci-fi drama and the opening series of episodes is about an android woman and her mate raising these infants on a desert planet i think it's i think the one you're looking for is raised by wolves yeah that's it that's the, the one no, i'm not seen it but I'm, i know the rabbi was very was very impressed by that it was an impressive looking series i don't remember ever hearing that it, it ended properly that it, it might have been cancelled in the second season i don't know but it was like super high production values mm. um it looked and sounded really good the story was really interesting. Layers of different times and different war cycles and stuff. It was mm. it was a fascinating looking show. But that was wholly original, uh, or yeah. for the most yeah. part, wholly and original. And Colin, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to have that going through my head all <laughs> night. I loved Casey Jones. I never saw it. Uh huh. I think me. I've not seen the Huckleberry oh, Finn yes. stuff. Yes, um, I don't think I've seen the Canadian version. I've seen Huckleberry mm. Finn. It used to have a TV shows, but singing, singing, ringing tree as well. Yes, oh dear God. Yeah, I know that's bringing us back to all the good stuff we watched at the moment. Quick, 
question Mostly is Darren, the UK stuff uh -huh. the question is though darren when you're talking and and in fact pj for that matter when you're when you're talking flashing blade are you talking the french flashing blade with english or the french flashing blade with the um manchester english. accents no the english it was the because uh, no, uh, there, there were two of them when i was a kid there was a flashing blade with proper serious english accent, yes they would talk they would talk proper english yes but they replaced the dubbing to you, yeah. sir, none of this. Yeah. No, but they, they read the dubbing. It was with sort of northern accents or something. It was very deliberately done. It was very odd because very deliberately done to be funny. And yeah, it was, you can it imagine was, it was a case of, sir, I throw down the gauntlet. Come and we shall fight. Whereas they dubbed it and gone, come ahead, big man. You're coming, get it. Well, I'm not, I'm, and, I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure. I know, but that, it was that type of thing. Yeah. They dubbed yeah. it like that. So yeah, instead I'm, of I'm not sure to, one challenging another, they would do yeah. it. With one challenge and a brummy mm. accent, come ahead, big man, come and get it, come on. Yeah. It's that type of thing. So, yes, I remember I heard about it, but I hadn't seen it. I saw the one, it was proper dubbed Space Precinct there. Yes, space got, precinct. I love Space Precinct. I've got that as well. I love it. And I've been looking for a Space Precinct figure. There's a shop, it's got them, but they're about 30 quid each. And oh, every time I go to buy one, and they're not the ones like the uh, the 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 figures I've got these ones are only that they're that size so they are and they're thirty quid each and it's just too expensive for a figure but no bigger than my index finger there's Blair there's there's um actually so many but a lot of these there's so early. many Saturday morning programs and we're going to stop talking about them because we can keep going forever and Ooh. ever and ever all i was going to say was and i don't know if you're this pete well, um, big finish have done a couple of audio i'm not sure that i think they're audio books of space precinct one of which is the story of how um i can't remember the the, the, the lead character actually moved from where it was he was on earth to demeter yeah. that, they've, they've actually done they're actually audio books i think I've heard of them, but I've not read them. It's just because uh, the audiobooks uh, of the TV shows, I'm not as keen on. I don't yeah, know what I've, it is. I've, because I've I'm them. so used to seeing it rather than somebody yeah. mm. telling me the story of it. It just, I, I never find it the same. I find it disappointing. It's the same as I love Blake Seven, but anytime I listen to my audiobooks of it, it just sort of. Yeah, they, they chat. Yeah. Now, changed, if someone would do an audio book finishing off Space Above and Beyond, I would yes, I would. Yep. An audio, I would definitely listen to an audiobook to get an ending to that story. Yeah, but and an explanation of where everything boy. Yes, I would like to. Oh, the good thing is in this one as well. Remember, we were saying it's very. They did the Vietnam type mm. things, calling them the Chigs, but they also did the World War Two things with Chiggy von Beethoven. <laughs> World War One. World War One. Sorry, I. It was the chicken <laughs> one. So I'm, just, I'm just having flashbacks to look exactly the same as you to Alex on another show. Uh, it was. Uh -huh. <laughs> but no, you and I both because he, he, he said something World War Two, and you and I both come back and said World, World War One. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. Uh -huh. Yes. But, uh, yeah. They, basically, they would do things like that, and it was good because yes, these are references. If you mm. even if you don't know anything about military stuff. Everybody knows about the Red Bar, and it's it's a, a story that even if you're not into military stuff, you've heard about it, or mm -hmm. there's, there's been movies about it. It's that type of thing, the Vietnam, so you understand the references when they're calling them the chicks and stuff like that. And but, that's what I enjoyed about the whole season. There was wee bits and pieces in there that it's not typically American. It's not typically this. It's not – there's something for everybody because – Yes, the Red Baron, and but that that was the First World War. But although it was a world war, it was a European conflict for a lot yeah. of the, the of the war. It was only at the end when the the Americans came in, and it was the, Jap the Japanese were also fighting and stuff like that. But I think a lot less. I think a lot less Americans 
know the bit about the Red Baron than a lot of people who were brought up in the well, Europe. I, 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 to be quite honest, most Americans who know about the Red Baron were probably would waiting for someone to call Side Snoopy to come along. Yes. Yes, indeed. <laughs> So, but that's, that's what I'm saying. It's just that type of thing. But it was good to see it because it was almost a case of, well, it's an Earth thing. So, why wouldn't you have references yeah, from different yeah. parts of the Earth? Right, and it, and right. another one of the one of my favourite episodes is about the APC, the Armored Personnel Carrier. Yeah, because the bit when they jump in and they say, "Oh, you've got a tank," and or he says, "You've got an APC," and the guy turns around and goes, "Tank." And Cooper looks at him because he was the one that says an APC. And the guy turns around and says, tank. And he looked at him as if he was he was slagging him. And he says, this is a tank, uh, not an APC. <laughs> he was very protective of his girl, the tank. Mm -hmm. And if anybody called it anything other than that. And it was just the way he did it because, oh, you've got an APC. And he just turned around and says, tank. It's almost oh, like he's slagging him. And he turns around and he says, this oh, no. is a tank, not an APC. No. And I thought that was quite nice. There was things like that. And and I, that was my favourite episode out of the run, was the one about the tank. No, Pur Purdy, Purdy was the one where, the, where, where they had the Brit. Yes. Tank, yeah. But I spent the entire series, but I'm done. I spent the entire, the, 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 the entire series waiting for them to land on a planet and come across the SAS patrol that had been there for six months observation, doing ops. Sorry, I'm a Brit. Yeah. <laughs> and you come against six years, well, where's everybody else in this? Obviously, it's an international effort. Um, begin with the fact that I had a British tank, uh, a British officer in there. Um, yeah, do you know who the British officer reminded me of? And I can't remember the guy's name who played it, so I think it was the same character Hogan's Heroes. Do you remember the British character in that? Yeah, and who, was that not the same character, the same guy? I don't remember. I don't think so because Hogan's Heroes was a lot. Hogan's um, obviously the Americans in the a German prisoner of war camp, yeah. and there was a well, it was, it was Martin uh, Martin Jarvis was uh, Colonel, Major Kent McKendrick. No, Colonel. Um, he was a Colonel. Um, oh, I can't even remember his name. I would need to look it up. No, so it was, it was Martin Jarvis of In Space Above and Beyond. Was it Martin Jarvis? Did, yeah. Was he not in Hogan's Heroes? Um, possibly. Um, Richard I don't know Dawson to... was the British officer in Hogan's was Heroes. That... The two of them have got a very similar look, and it's just that's what it reminded me of. Because he, um, the one that was in Hogan's Heroes was in MASH, playing a British officer. So he was... It was the same guy in both of those, playing the British uh, major or colonel. But I thought he was the same guy in this one. But I've, as I said, I've, I've not seen that episode for a wee while, but that was the one that I preferred. That was the one I still remember, and it's the one I enjoyed, the one about the tank. And it was a, it was a comedian who was playing that part. I've seen him in a few things, and I, can, I would need to dig that episode out just to get it. Let's see. I've got all the episodes here. It's what is it called? Christ. See, so try to actually find one. Not pearly. You're thinking about. Yeah, I'm thinking around the tank when I pearly the one with, with um, Martin Jarvis because the tank one was an American tank, he wasn't it? Who didn't survive? If I remember right. Aye, he meets an American soldier. No, it's not that one. Yeah, I think it was. Cool. I think Early John with Martin Jarvis. Um, yeah. Is it episode be... 16, perhaps? Toy Soldiers? That's what I'm thinking. Squad Commander makes resource decisions stand in order. No. It ha it's definitely the one. It's all about. It's a tank. I'm just trying to remember the. Yeah, I know the one you mean. Um... It's not Stay with the Dead. Dead. I love when they get into military life. Uh, you know, I think it's it's absent. We haven't seen those kinds of shows in a very long time. We've seen plenty of shows talking about prison life. And uh, God, how many shows have we seen about prisons these days? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I miss the old TV shows about a gang of guys that are doing what they gotta 
to get it done. Yeah. You know. it, is, it is pearly. Is it? I was going to say maybe. It was pearly. Could... It was Sergeant Lewis Fox, who was yeah. the driver. Um, he play, He was played by Adam Goldberg. He was the one I remember in it, and he's played a few quite memorable parts. I'm just trying to remember going back a bit. I don't, it's no he's in your stuff. Because he was in things like Fargo, but he always played that white white guy and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Almost like a, a, um, a New York mafia hood. Not a boss, but a hood. You Basically just one of these guys. And he was the one that played in it. Yeah. And he's been in quite a few things. I'm just trying to find something that's a wee bit he was more well known for. That's where it was. He was in, remember Joey, the spin-off from Friends? He played the, the Jimmy. Yeah, he's the face, he's the face, he's the face from really. Yeah, it's mm. he played Jimmy in that. That's what I remember him from. He's been in quite a few things. He's in My Name is Arrow and stuff like that. But he always played the white guy, the the sort of con man type thing. And in this, I thought he played it spot on. It was just this guy who was at the end of his tether and he was looking after his tank, even though when the tank was about to be blown up, he would not leave it. He would defend it with his life. And it was a very good story. The bit about, the obviously, the, 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 the eccentric British soldier was part and parcel of it, but it was all about the tank. It was the one I remember. So that's where I'm getting that from. I'm not. I'm not necessarily picturing him in Joey, but I don't recognise anything else he's been in. So it must be that I recognise the face from. Uh huh. But yeah, no, I've, I've recognised him from a few things. I remember him from Joey. He played the the his sister's boyfriend, Joey's sister's boyfriend, I think, Jimmy. Yeah. I'll need to check out eBay to get the figures. So well, it was again. I mean, again, it was. I think as as a show, it was very good. It was. It was. They did show. They did vary a lot. They did try to do a lot of different um, storylines as well. I think. Yeah. Um, oh, and this, they they definitely tried a lot of different things. They did mm. a lot of. Believe it or not, they they could have done a show just without the pilot aspect of it because the pilot. The pilot and, and the dog fights weren't they that of a mainstay. Yeah, of the show. Mm, indeed. it was all about ground pounding. Yeah. So they could have got away with that aspect of it, but they obviously had the idea of the hammerheads. And when somebody built a model of a hammerhead, it just looked fantastic. I can't deny it. the the ship looked great. Mm. And I'm I would like to get one of those models. I I suppose it's not. Not entirely surprising that there's actually quite it's got quite a lot in common visually and in, in certain vehicles and that with um roughnecks, which also uh, has a lot with um what was it I was thinking of that also reminds me of. Well, you look at the ship, you look at the transport ship, yeah, that, that could have easily been in Starship Troopers, easily. Yeah. Mm. So it fitted very well in that, and I think it was very the when somebody was designing the hammerheads and the ships and stuff like that, they looked very functional, shall we say. It yeah. wasn't very sci-fi like with the Vipers, which was just a, them sitting in a rocket, whereas yeah. they, would, they would turn and bank and stuff like that. And it wasn't very futuristic, like Babylon 5 with Star Furies with all the, the, the rockets all over it to spin yeah. it and stuff like that. This was sort of a bit it was very plain like, but you still saw the maneuvering jets, which was a nice touch. So it was a bit mm. of both. It was a rocket at the back, but when they still had the maneuvering jets to keep them steady behind the asteroids and stuff like that. So there was yeah. good, good parts and bad parts in this. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, that's the thing is, I think, is that um, Shad did a video quite a while ago now, I think, about. Um, Good and bad space com space combat and scenes in in TV from I can't remember what it was actually doing with Lego models or something model spaceships. Mm -hmm. um, I think 
I've got one. I think he had I'm still trying to collect all my spaceships that I want. I've got the all the Thunderbirds. I've got most of Babylon 5 ones. Mm. I've still got to get Babylon 5 and Red Dwarf. I've got the green, the Starbug behind me. I've mm. not got the blue midget, but uh, and I've obviously got an Ego. I've got a Viper. I've got the Enterprise. I've got a Firefly. It's stuff like that. So I've been trying to build up my vehicles, space, mm. and stuff like that. Of pro programs I watch growing up watching, and I've been trying to collect the vehicles mm. from all that's that. A lot I mean, got, that's why um, I've got a, a <laughs> Zebra One, and I've got the 18 van as well. And I've mm. got Penelope pit stops. Oh. And, um, and I've got wow. Lady Penelope's Rolls mm. Royce. I've got the Mystery Machine. I've got a Batman 66 just sitting behind me there. Yeah. So things like that. I, I try and pick up vehicles and I definitely want a hammerhead for my collection. I remember, There's I remember a, a 172 scale model, but it's like $100. Uh, cool. so. yeah. I, I remember making Airfix Eagles. I see, I remember making uh, a lot of Airfix stuff. It was mainly tanks and stuff, but that's why I like that mm -hmm. pair. What I did a lot. I, I, I basically my favorite. My cousin used to do a lot of aircrafts, and I would do all the tanks. Mm. And actually, he, but he would build one for me. <clears> I would was was. tank for an aircraft because it's well painted as well as well built. Means where I was, I preferred the tank, so means were yeah, well. Yeah, well I, I, I was more of a military more than than plane. I did plane. I mean, I had a forty-eight scale. Hurricane and all the, all the traditional ones and the rest of it. But I, I remember when I started making sort of the Warhammer 40k models. Um, okay, I'd make the tank and then I'd raid my bits box. And I would um, do better than that. I would, I would build the tank and then what I would do is go down to the B&Q and buy small bits of pipe so the tank turret would be twice as long <laughs> oh, I, I had a mortar thrower and I had a mortar thrower with a, a, a six inch gun so the, <laughs> the, the tank was that size and the gun was that size and I had two I had two tubes so basically the gun stuck up I put a tube over the top of that and then I put another tube over the top of it so mm. it basically the barrel looked thicker and then thinner so yeah. and and it basically looked great. And then what I did was I covered some of it with a bit of a, a bandage, painted that green, so it was yeah. camouflage. And oh yeah, it. yeah. I, did I that. used to do that with my tanks, even when I was playing forty k. Yeah. So I started as a kid right through, and I was when I was doing forty k, I was up to about fifteen years ago. I was still building them and well, doing that. I love tanks. That's it. I mean, I must admit. I mean, I never. I don't think I ever. I only played forty k a couple of times. I never had my own full army in the rest of it. But certainly, my forty k military vehicles, most of them were probably worth way more points than the than than you know than the basic kit because it had you know coaxial machine guns along the turret and um, and smoke dispensers and, and also not just weapons wise. You know, I mean, also adding on things like personal kit and the rest of it. Right. You know. Yeah, I yeah. did the one thirty fifth scale Tamiya stuff when I was yep. younger. Oh, like, yeah. My my absolute favorite of those, um, the best one I think was there was a um an eighty eight mil flat anti uh, anti aircraft gun. Yeah, and you're half reading my track. mind, Colin. I, <laughs> and I love half, that weapon. You 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 had the eighty eight flak. You had the half track towing thing, and you had about eight to ten. Infantry figures to go with it all in one kit. Yeah. 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 Awesome. The only one I've got left, I've got a tank. Um, where's my tank? It's up here. Yeah. yeah, that gun, Colin, was so awesome. And the yeah. the, the 20 millimeter anti aircraft, too, was also a really hot yeah. kit. Oh, nice. That's all I've got left. That is, that's an American one, isn't it? It is. It's not a shit. No, it's not a Sherman. It's no, it's not a Sherman. It's the, it's a more modern one. The Sherman's. Oh, uh, what? oh. like an Abrams or something like that. I think it's um Abrams. I uh, I can't remember the the model of it. Is it a Chaffee? Hold on, hold on. Well, uh, 
No, it's it's, it's an M60. Vietnam yeah. era. What was the name of that Clint Eastwood movie with Donald Sutherland as the tank operator? I, I love a good tank story. Kelly's Heroes? Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. There's so many of them in that time period. The 60s, they did some really good ones. Oh, is that is that um two or three piece plastic or is that an actual kit? It's a tune, it's a it's oh. meant to be it's meant to be remote control, but the um, oh, right. I, I, I used oh. to have it driving all over Magma, so oh, the battery's see, dead and I, I don't want to take it apart to put a new do, battery. Do you remember those ones? You've got about four quid, oh, about four bits. It was a tank, it's an M41, and it are. Oh. The turret was one bit, the the um, chassis was another, and the, yes. the two tracks in it. You know, four. Oh, I don't know, yeah, yeah. Uh, PJ, uh, you should try and you should try and remove the batteries anyway because they will they will expand and contaminate the electronics. I know. Yeah, I know, but it's just uh, with this every time I, think, yeah, I've already yeah, done yeah. that t with two. That's why I've only got one left. Grief. <laughs> And basically, yeah, I break them. I break things because I'm right-handed and I've got zero coordination and I can't do it with my left hand. Uh, zero coordination. So anytime I try and do something, it pops apart and it basically breaks. I've already broken a Spitfire. I've only uh, got a Lancaster bomber sitting up there. I've not got a, I've, my Spitfires in pieces because I tried to fix it. Oh, no. So now if anything falls off it, I just take the bit that's fallen off and put it in a tin. Hopefully somebody will fix it for me one day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, I, sus I suspect you probably used to get military modeling as well, did you? Yeah, you know, I, I remember I'd once, one of them was where, you, you know, conversion kits, I think one of them where you could convert an M45 to an M60, oh, I can't remember that one, yeah. or, or how to take, you know, kit, what they'd call kit bashing these days, we were just called converting. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, I mean, when, this... when I was growing up, my friend's father was in the Merchant Navy. And when he was coming back, because he was away for so long, he would bring his son and a couple of his friends, if we were really lucky, things back. And he brought his son a gun, a wooden rifle, metal barrel with a caulking action and everything. Wow. But the caulking action had a wooden bullet as part of the caulking action, so it looked as if you were... And it was it looked it looked realistic. Type of things you couldn't play with now. <laughs> but we were all starting yeah. about with these rifles with the, the, the straps and everything. We all thought we were actually great. Twelve year olds starting uh actually not even twelve, I think we were ten starting about with these rifles, wooden oh, rifles God, make yeah. look mm. metal, metal and they were the painted well done. He got them in China when he was over and he he, he, he he picked up a few and brought them back for all of us. We, it was I think, I tell, you know, one of the things I did was um, made a few spaceships. Um, I went like that. Best, the ME 262. Remember that one? Measurement 262. Aye, mate, mate, aye. When you yeah. said spaceships, then you said the ME 262. And I'm sitting there thinking, <laughs> yeah. ME 262. Yeah. Paint over the cap. You, you paint over the um, canopy, and it could be a. It makes a great. It could be a spaceship. It, you know, it's a, you know, you know, you know. I will well, the two six two because it's got the actual two jet propulsion yeah. under the wings. Yeah. I suppose mm -hmm. you can get away with it. Uh -huh. I mean, it's, you know, the two, it's one of those ones. I mean, you could do it. You know, um, and you know, and and, and putting these. I know. Here. I know what I'll need to do. I'll need to sp speak to Planet Dave. The guy who goes to the Comic Cons very uh, quite regularly in this in Scotland. He stays in Glasgow and he's got a Facebook page, Planet Dave. He built my Viper, wow. and on one side he painted it Apollo, the other side he painted it Starbuck. Oh, nice. It's got you put it in. It's got different lines and stuff like that. Wow. I think there's, there's some really interesting. I'll tell you, mate. It's changed so much. I I I, I caught, watched quite a few channels and videos from Morgan, and it's so many things have changed so much. Um, I mean, things like what fascinates me. We get get people that up now do resin, and you get resin pores, and you get where you've got an entire underwater scene, or there's there's one of the people best... are building them. Yes, this yeah, uh, they're yeah. building so, uh, subway scenes. With lights and everything, well, there's, yeah. There's, 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 there's a guy in, I think he's Swedish. 
my brain's completely switched off on his channel name on. But he just they actually got a um I think they said it weighs something like 12 kilos, a resin tau manta for 40k. The biggest I I, I either that or the Mars Wall or Titan, they're the biggest. Well, the Titan, I reckon if the Titan, there's a guy building a Titan to scale. Yeah. For Warhammer 40k, and he says if he builds it, it'll be seven foot tall. Well, yeah, midway to finish is doing For 40k. Yeah. Midway to finish is doing that. I think he said it cost him 1600 quid. Yeah. And he well, he's, he's building, it. He's building yeah. it by pl but from plastic. He's not building oh, it from brain. Yeah, so I've seen that as well. Plastic. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. Is he says because he's got the Warhammer Epic, which is the, yeah. the very, very small figures, and it stands that height on the table when you've got all these yeah. small. I tanks. remember I, I had an Epic. Like he tried, he, he, tried yeah. to build it. he says if he built it, it would stand yeah. taller than yeah. him. And well, this is seven foot, he reckons. I, it would be. I, th I think this, this Manta is actually the same scale as. as um, it, it, it's to scale, and what they've done is they've cut it, they've made it a massive, great. Um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Di I mean, a massive great diorama where it's crashed and they've broken up, and they've got two, if not oh, three, yeah, mini vignettes inside. Well, literally, they, they've cut away inside the foam that they build it on. And I've got uh, like once there's, there's a lake in it. There's a towel fishing. That's it's taken them sixteen hundred man hours to do this. I know it's, it's crazy what they've done. On oh, by the oh. way, Melvin, um, morons from outer space. Tell me, there's not a George, there's no Georgia accents in space. Mel Smith, um, Griffiths Jones, Jimmy Neal, isn't it? Um, yes. Oh, who else is in it? Who was the woman that uh, she played? Um, Angela Dickinson, I think she's in it. Morons from outer space. Mel, Mel Smith and Jimmy Neal are in it. And let's see if you, there's no Geordie accents. Mm -hmm. Basically, these guys are thick. They, they're driving a truck and they, they land in the, the earth, and all the soldiers are outside, and he opens the door and it falls off. And he goes, Do you break that? <laughs> Geordie well, accent. Uh, uh, accents is is um, Arnold Schwarzenegger. They were going to, or they did a, they, they released um, the Terminator into, and I'm trying to work it in the back of my head. I did the accent. German, they, um, they released uh, in German. And yeah, and, Arnold they, and his accent. He he actually wanted to yeah. dub it himself, in the and the accent he had an accent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the to, to a German speak to a, a German. The Austrian accent sounds like a Darsa accent to us. Uh, yeah, it was Pamela Stevenson. Uh -huh. I was Pamela. Oh, uh. it was because uh, I was thinking uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to Galaxy. It was, but it was it was it was Neanderthal uh, Dickinson. It was Pamela Stevenson. So, oh, Sandra Dickinson, you're thinking of? I was thinking of Sandra Dickinson. Yeah. Angie Dickinson, please swim in Miss, the Mrs. 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 Fifth Doctor. Yes, the Kent Doctor's mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. Who I think met her husband to be when they were both filming an extremely camp episode of the Tomorrow People. Yeah, but so that, that, that's when you've got the doctor has married the doctor's daughter and has a son who's also the doctor's grandson. Well, you've, you've got you 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 you've got the doctor. Um, marries his, his, marries, his own marries. clone. That's true, Jenny. Yeah. Right, marries his own clone. Uh, and his son. So and he is. He, 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 so he is himself and his wife and his father-in-law. <laughs> David Tennant is a weird person. Yes, uh -huh. that's, that's weird. <laughs> but anywho, what we'll do is we'll start rounding off because we, we've drifted away from space mm. above and beyond. A great wee show. So. Give it a mark out of 10. Tell us what you, you liked about this series and then we'll start wrapping up. Colin, you go first. Um, I hate Mark and out of 10. Um, ignoring the fact that it ended on a cliffhanger um, 
eight, I think, probably, because I've got good memories of it. The, the military was mostly really good. There's some really there was some interesting stories. And they got to the point, of, it, they even got to the, as you get in later on, um, where actually even the bad guys aren't necessarily the bad guys. Because the cheeks aren't necessarily, you know, the cheeks aren't necessarily... I was it the AIs that actually manipulated them yeah. into doing it, uh-huh. or was it something? Or, or, or was it um, oh, Aerotech or whatever the company was called? Yeah, that's true. Uh huh. The colonists, if they were the ones yeah. that actually did it with the, I mean, uh, with, you know, was, was, was you know was it the company because Aerotech the company was certainly um, or or, or whatever it was it was called. I might have been Aerotech, but I can't remember. It was was certainly the um hiding thing I, mean, I must admit i'm thinking about that again I'm, I'm thinking being a starship troopers fan i'm thinking okay so were they more and more extremists because of course, starship troopers is more and more extremists who actually set a, a, against advice in the bug um territory which is what starts the bug war yeah so you don't know um, the thing yeah. is you don't know yeah. what really started but yes they were lining it up to be yeah not necessarily what you expected it yeah, to be. I mean, they, were, they weren't they attacked and killed just because. Yeah, I mean, was it, it was, AIs that were actually manipulating them, telling them was, things, or was it a case of the they landed in places they shouldn't yeah. have landed, even though they knew somebody else already had an interest in that yeah. planet? Well, there's, there's, that, there's, that's the way it was scheming. So there's an interesting pal. If, if anybody knows um, David Webber's on a Harrington series. Nope. There's an interesting potential parallel there to who you find out is actually behind a lot of the wars and the rest of it in the universe, and it turns out to be not the people you think it is. That's always the case, but that's um, a good. But yeah, but point. again, it, it 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 was it was quite a layered. Um, I, I said, I mean, I wasn't overly much a fan of the fact that. Well, hold a second, if these are highly highly paid, um, uh, um expectedly trained pilots while they spending 90 percent of their time on the ground that kind of thing did draw me out of it a little bit um but even then i was old enough to understand that yeah but there's, there's the storytelling and the needs of the story you know require some things um, yeah yeah very good what about you Stephen? um i'm gonna give it uh i'm gonna give it a five out of 10 for uh the actual execution i thought was weak in some points it's just my personal taste but i'm gonna give it a seven out of ten for the effort of even trying to break into this very difficult story type of uh storytelling science fiction uh, requires so much forethought so much pre-visualization all the model building the universe creation the costuming Mm. The sets, it's its its an all-out effort if you go there. I, mm-hmm. Fantasy, you just film in a woods, you know? Yeah. Uh, a, a rom-com, you just film it in an apartment building. But science fiction requires an all-out effort. All hands mm-hmm. on deck need to be required. I'll be, I'll be, interesting to, <coughs> be interesting to see if you do watch the rest of it. <laughs> Excuse me. How, if your opinion and your scoring changes... I'm curious. Yeah, I'm curious to see the rest of the series. Because I, I, I mean, I'm, I, well, the good thing is we can always, uh, by the time we get to the end of the seasons, uh, we can actually discuss it on Saturday nights. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll have it. I'll have it in my head by Saturday. Now I'll not have it finished because I've got um I've got other bits and pieces. I've got to speak to Alec tomorrow about other stuff, and I've got a couple yeah, of things I, mean, I want to watch before Saturday. That's right, yeah. Alec's diabolical stream. Yeah. yeah. Well, yes, I've got so much other things. I've, I've, I'm going to. I started because I was. I don't know what put me. In, I ended up. I watched the. Uh, oh, I think what was weird. The way YouTube works. For some reason, um, a cut down um, combat scenes of Starship Troopers Invader Invasion just turn up in my recommends. Well, I've got all this stuff saved on a disc, so I, I went and watched that. I'm going to watch Trade of Mars again at some point, but I'm now, I said, working my way through the Roughneck series. 
We'll have to all go to the rough next day. That's mm. on my list as well. Yeah. I've watched all the Starship Troopers movies. And I've got the rough next to finish off. I've got enough next to watch. Sorry, oh, it's on my list. It's yeah. the problem is I've got too many lists. Yeah, what, I'm about six months ahead with my list of what I want to watch. I mean, I I don't know how it's. <coughs> I don't know how it's divided up on on the discs, but what I've got, I've got about eight different videos. Each one's about an hour and a half long. But what they are, they the way they made the series. They broke it down into if chapters, if you like. So you had about yeah. four, three or four episodes set in one campaign. Then they move on to a completely different planet and they got episodes set in that and so on. And the way I've actually, the way I got hold of it, it was, it's actually broken down into the campaigns. Um, but so, you know, you if, if especially if it's broken down into episodes, you know, you have 20 minute episodes, you don't have to yeah. necessarily watch a lot. Uh -huh. and, and it's not a case of, you have to watch the episodes through. They are, although it's one continuous story, it is episodic in the fact you can watch episode the first episode, and you can watch the second episode. <coughs> Pardon me, and it's a different episode. It's not one continuous story. Yeah, that's a, that's a good thing about these things. But anyway, for me, I will give. Sorry, Stephen, have you finished? Because I, I sort of subtracted and says by the end of the story, we could walk, talk about it and walk, let's talk geeky. Have, did you finish? Uh, yes, I. yeah, that was my two cents, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Well, for me, I would give it a seven as well. I thought the it was a bit clunky. I'm not denying that. And some of the things that they said, the scripting was a bit is almost it was disjointed like they would give the the chig water through its gills and then when it spewed up all this stuff out of the gill they said why did it kill itself mm, really yeah. it's, just, it's almost like those two parts were separated and shoved together for some reason it just didn't quite mesh mm. and it'd be things like that just annoy me about it but on the whole I thought it was a very good start, and it's got good character development throughout the season. There was a couple of really good episodes, and that's what really got me. There was, I loved the one about up early about the tank. That's the one mm. that I remember the most out of the whole thing. And yes, having pilots on the and being ground pounders was, even when I was I watched it the first time, it felt a bit weird, but. For storytelling, I understood it a hundred percent, so I just ignored that aspect of it and just put it as part of the world building. Pilots are ground pounders because because they can actually train them quite quickly, like video games. They didn't need to actually; it's not a lot of training they need to put in. Mm. So it was just part and parcel. Here, play this video game for a wee while. You can play the video game. Well, if you can play that, you can go in that and fly it the same way. Mm. Because it's the same controls, and that's the way I was looking at it. It didn't take a lot. They didn't need to know about um, fluid dynamics and all this because they were in space. As long as they knew how to fly, because the simulators give and they could fly in the simulator. Mm. To me, that's the way I looked at it. It was a quick way of putting them through training. It was just another part of the training. It didn't need to have any specialist knowledge. Someone there would watch The Last Starfighter. Yeah, that type of thing. Play the computer game. But yeah, that's the way I looked at it because the training sims and stuff like that, it was the same pods. They were flying and it, the look around was the same, the same feeling. So it just looked like if you could if you could fly in the sim, then you should have no issues out there. And that's the way it came across to me. So basically, it was just part and parcel of the basic training. They didn't need to know all the fluid dynamics. They didn't need to know about gravitational pull and stuff like that. They didn't need a lot of mathematics for flights and stuff like that. It's just a case of here, fly that like the, the simulator mm -hmm. and just uh, press a, a gun and fire. And that was it. Mm -hmm. So that's the way it was like me. It was almost like giving them a Jeep with a machine gun on board. Can you drive? I uh, here's this here's the thing you stand up there and shoot. Right. That's the way I, I looked at it. It was nothing fancy because of the way they took it into the future because of that. And that's just 
the way I put it, as the captain says, or I say yep. the captain, that's what I do in my head, Canon. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, so, yeah, I made a couple of three Willis Jeeps myself as well. <laughs> but I actually think this, it had promise because it was starting mm. to do a good world building and good character building. The characters didn't start off strong. They started off weak and not a lot of knowledge, and as it went through, they got better than better. So you when you see have... later on, they're oh. flying and they're the crazy, uh, the wild cards, and the uh, and they were doing the dog fights. You could believe it because you saw them at the very beginning, not being too experienced. And yeah. so I liked it, and I thought it was well worth it. Seven out of ten is what I would give it. So, ladies and gents, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, anything to plug, guys? I have uh, my Thursday with Roman and John, uh, 5 p.m. Pacific time. Or as we call it, Friday, 1 o'clock in the morning. In the UK. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> uh, we're going to be kicking around the subject of K uh, Philip K. Dick. Uh, hopefully, Ooh, uh, chat will be on fire. Uh, I'll not I'll no be in the chat, but I'll be watching it on Friday morning here. Because uh, uh, Roman is really into Philip K. Dick, and apparently John doesn't even know who he is. So that should be hysterical. It's going to be yeah. amazing to find out how many, Mo oh, how many movies, movies have come from the book. Recently, yeah. yeah, I know uh, Roman's doing it, but... <laughs> Oh, well, I, I, I actually also quite I actually also quite enjoyed the TV series of um which they called Total Recall with a K, but was half Total Recall, half Blade Runner. Uh, is that was quite, Total Recall twenty or no, 20 no, 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 no. Total Recall was 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 a movie. There was a TV no, it's series called Total Recall twenty uh, the the what was it called? It was I think it was just called Total Recall, I'm not sure. I thought it was hmm. uh, had a number after it. It might have been because no, total because was it total week or twenty twenty four whatever it was was the one when they were was the remake. Uh, um, total yeah, recall twenty seventeen. It was almost oh, okay. Fair enough. Right. Yeah, because it was. I've got it. I've just had it. Mm. I've not watched it yet. It's on my watch. because <laughs> one. One one of the part one of the, it's a it's a semi police procedural, but one of the partners is a robot. Um, it's being um, almost human, Carol Urban. Well, well I, actually, I was I was I was actually going to say, Alien Nation. Uh, Alien Nation. Ah, uh, yes. Alien. But Carol Urban is the one with the robot. He's a robot partner, and that was almost yeah. uh, almost human, but. There you go. Um, call, um, Alec, we're literally just rounding up. We're actually just about to see Cheerio. You get in just in time to see Cheerio. So, anyway, so keep stay tuned for, well, not stay tuned, as in tune in mm. to Roman of the Empire for Saturday, uh, sorry, Thursday at 5 PST or yes. Friday 1 AM real time. time, real time. Yes. <laughs> so, well, actually, no. Technically speaking, it will be midnight real time because real time is GMT. Hey, and what is GMT. it over in Australia? Because yeah. uh, there's, there's the, uh, New Zealand and stuff. It's I think New Zealand's is it nine hours ahead of us? Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's nine just a hours bit ahead. before, so it's probably mid afternoon or noon. Somewhere yeah. there, mm. yeah. But no, G, no GMT. We are GMT. No, so we're, we're BST. We GMT plus one. I no. know this because I my Kindle died on me the other day, and I managed to pick up a Kindle Fire to that yesterday for eighteen. Oh, that's the first time I've heard that because I'm means is still on GMT and it's a GMT, which is. The same time because GMT in uh, British Standard Time is the same time. No, GM, GMT, we, we spring forward and fall back, remember? <laughs> GM, yes. GMT is Zulu time and British Summer Time is one hour ahead. Right, okay, GMT. I just stick with GMT. <laughs> Bugger that. The, well, I know, the, the thing <laughs> is, for, for most settings, if you set it by... 
if you if you set the time on your device by by location, what it will say is it will say London, and uh -huh. then it will say London. And if you set it during BST, it will show as GMT plus one. If you set it during GMT, it will set it as, as GMT. They, they, it automatically picks those things up. Well, I, really I, think I just set means to London, Edinburgh. Yeah, uh, yes, Belfast, exactly. Yeah, GMT, I'm, that's why that's zero, 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 that's zero, zero. Yeah. So, yeah, no matter if it's GMT or BST, <laughs> it's all B, uh, bullshit. Yeah, it's all BS. British time is the only real time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Plus one. Yeah. Blair, Blair de Blair uh, says it's three fifty six p.m. here. At the moment, it is nine fifty seven p.m. So there's a three hour, a six hour difference between us and Blair. Yep. What time is it, you, Stephen? I'm um, just coming up on two o'clock. Two o'clock. So you're two hours be uh, behind Blair as well. So there you go. All right. the different time zones in one. It's so complicated. We need a map. I used to Definitely. do that on Twitter. I would tweet out tr uh, show times with a map. And I'm like, here's a calculator. Here's a map. Figure it out for yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I used to actually just say, join us tonight at 8 o'clock. And people were saying, 8 o'clock when? Because this yeah, is where? Yeah. It doesn't. Well, so, so one of the good things which we go on, you, you click on something on um, YouTube, it'll tell you how long. Because gets me yeah. when you see something says twelve p twelve o'clock, and you think is that twelve o'clock tomorrow morning or twelve? And the good thing, the good thing is uh, when you just click on it, it'll tell you the time wherever you're. Yeah, looking. and it'll it's, tell you how long. If you've got a VPN running, it's a pain yeah. in the ass. Ah, <laughs> yes. Because basically VPN thinks I'm uh, actually sitting in uh, Las Vegas at the moment. <laughs> oh. I know. Anyway, we'll finish up there. Boys and girls, lads and lassies, thank you for joining us. Remember, I'm not old. I'm classic. Myself, Colin and Stephen, out. Bye. Okay.